How to find clients on LinkedIn, Sales Navigator. Guys, this is what this video is all about. And I'm actually going to show you not one, but two methods that I use when searching for clients on LinkedIn. The first method is a little bit easier, but the second one is a little bit more intelligent. And I actually prefer the second one because it allows me to organize everybody who I reach out to in a bit, in a more streamlined manner. Let's put it this way. However, I'm going to show you two methods and then you decide which one you prefer. I'm going to start with the easier one, the simpler one. So once you're inside LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you go to the search box and hit enter. So then it gives you this LinkedIn Sales Navigator search and all you need to do is scroll a little bit down on the left sidebar and click see all filters. Now you've got this massive selection of all these different filters. So now all you need to do is find your decision makers. Yeah, the people that you can reach out to and uh, well, connect with them, develop a relationship. That's because this is something that I do with my genuine social selling approach. And once you connect and connect and develop this relationship, they might ask what, what you're selling or you might find the right appropriate moment to kind of let them know about your services. However, I'm, I'm not talking about this in this specific video. So now all you need to do is actually go to the geography first. I, I like to start with the geography and let's assume that you're a digital marketing agency and you work with plumbers. So suppose that you're based in New York and you actually want to get in touch with all the plumbers that are located in New York City. So all you need to do is type in New York City and it actually already spits out these results. So you've got New York City metropolitan area and New York basically the state. So We'll go for the first one because we just want to have people from inside New York City metropolitan area. And once you apply this filter, it's crazy. You get like more than 13 million people from New York metropolitan um, city area. So now we need to do our finding and actually find the plumbers. That is pretty, pretty easy. All you need to do is go to the search keywords. Well, there are actually two ways. So the first one, you go into the it had like some industry somewhere. There we go, industry. You can type in wholesale hardware and uh, plumbing heating equipment. So that actually is pretty cool. So you can insert this here and immediately you get 420, 524 results, okay? So I'm not a huge fan of this one because it actually can, um, kill some of the results you would have otherwise gotten. So instead of using this industry thing, we can actually take this one out. I'm going to keep it now for the sake of the demonstration, take it out like that. And instead go to the search keywords and type in plumbing here. Now that you type in plumbing, you actually get 43 thousand results and as you can see there's a big difference between this one and this one the thing with this filter what it does is it actually searches people's linkedin profiles whatever they've got mentioned there and if they mention plumbing anywhere then it shows up so this list is a lot less cleaner than the list we would have gotten with this industry thing yeah because again, not everybody fills up this stuff, but they might write in that they do plumbing on their profile. So if you wish to catch all of these prospects, you go and actually use this search bar, search box, box here. Now, we need the decision makers. And uh, a lot of people will tell you, oh, you just go to the current job title, this filter, and type in owner or freelance or founder, co-founder, partner, whatever. The problem with this filter is that it applies for every single position these guys have. That means that if they are a founder in a company that has nothing to do with plumbing, but they still mentioned it on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is going to show that to you. So instead of using this filter, I recommend you go into the seniority level and here is where you pick your owner or partner okay now once you pick the owner or the partner your search result quantity has gone down dramatically you only have more than 2000 results right now and once you start looking through the profiles you're like oh that's actually a lot cleaner as well owner ceo 
Vigilante Plumbing Heaton Information Technology Partner Sharpen. So there we go. That's one of the search results that I was talking about. So maybe he's actually working with uh, with plumbers. So maybe he's our competitor. So that also happens. Owner Commercial Repair Services Plumbing Owner Vice President Master Planning Corp, Corp Blue Water Plumbing and so on. That is already really really good results. What if you want to further clean things up a little bit by specifying the size of the company you want to work with you can go to the company headcount bar and it's right here so you can pick either self-employed guys that mentioned plumbing on their profile some of them would be self-employed plumbers for sure or you can get these guys one to tens so they're pretty they're a little bit bigger they probably have some processes in, in place already they're more like maybe plumbing agencies of sorts or even bigger guys and so on and so forth again this filter is a little bit let's let's click it let's click one to ten and see what we got so vice president blue water plumbing casa plumbing plumbing yeah it's it's pretty pretty results are pretty good okay so we'll leave it at that and uh that's pretty much it that's how you find your clients using this simple method by first going to the lead tab on LinkedIn sales navigator, then picking up the geography, the location, the CRNU level, the company headcount, and naturally picking the, the type of the uh, um, customer that you wish to reach out to. In this case, I'm using plumbing and you can use anything. So what is the second, <laughs> second more intelligent way of doing things? Second more intelligent ways of way of doing things, in my opinion, and in my experience is actually finding the companies first. So instead of picking these guys, and that's just, again, that's just how LinkedIn works, yeah? Because we're doing B2B stuff. We want to find, we want to find the companies, yeah? So if we have, if we know that there are like 150 companies in the area, we know exactly how many companies are there. So it means we cannot sell them like more than once. So we go one by one, each of these companies and find their decision makers. Then we reach out to them and the rest is, uh, the rest is history. How do you do this? Again, you LinkedIn, you go to search bar, hit enter. And now you're again in the same place. And instead of staying here in the lead tab, you go to the account tab. And um, if I was to translate LinkedIn's English, lead is basically people and account is basically companies. That is That makes it so much easier. So again, you hit the see all filters and um, here you are with all these filters. So now we are going to find all those plumbing companies just like we did the last time. And I'm um, going to start with the headquarters location. So again, let's type in New York City just to make it identical. So now we've got 1 million companies based in New York City. Now we can, again, we can pick the industry. We can go into plumbing and see what that returns. We only got 35 results. Or we can type in plumbing here. And in this case, it will be a lot more accurate. Yeah, because we are searching for companies and a company, if it does plumbing, well, sure, they will mention that they do plumbing on their company page. Because otherwise, like, what are you doing there? And as you can see, we got 4,000 results, 4,000 plumbing results for New York City area now we can again play with the size of the company so suppose you want to get companies that are actually a decent size which is like 11 to 50 so we pick that filter and now we only have 299 results more than that we can also pick the companies that we want to be earning a certain amount of annual revenue so suppose we want to go from 1 million to whatever that is and we got 192 results now. You see how cool? You see where it's all going? And um, we can also play with other things like, you know, if you want to pick, if I, obviously there will not be in Fortune 500 companies, any of the plumbing companies located in New York, but these are, there is a lot of other filters that you can play with. Personally, I stop here because the other is like number of followers, basically it's like how many 
followers does the company have and that means like you can kind of estimate the amount of time how popular it is but also the amount of time it's been registered on linkedin because naturally the longer the company's out been been out there on linkedin registered the more followers it would have gotten you can play with department headcount growth that applies to you but again this is probably for some massive companies also there are like technologies used filter here but again like uh yeah in case you want to like understand what these companies are using which is which can be pretty powerful if you're using if you're selling a technology-based digital marketing service again make sure that not all of them would probably mention this yes yeah? so uh just make a mental note of that and uh that's pretty much it what do you do now you've got all these companies you've got one 192 companies which fit your ideal customer profile your icp what do you do next well now now you find those decision makers how do you do that you go you go and click select all and it will pick 25 companies because this is what page one gives us 25 companies and uh, what you do now is actually click view current employees and when i when i press click i actually hold control and if you on mac command button so it opens up the next the separate tab for this why do you do this well because if you click on it then go through the decision makers and hit back you will lose all these filters and you kind of want to keep all of these so ideally you want to go page by page open them up like this and i'll show you why it's important in a moment so once you have all like this sample of 25 companies open up, you go into the search and here you've got all of these companies selected. So I want to expand it a little bit. Now, what you do is you actually unselect all of these options here. So what we're gonna do now is that we're going to work each of these companies one by one when it comes to identifying the decision makers that they got there okay we're going to close all of this and select exclude and now we only see the employees of this <laughs> macaroni plumbing so 44 results now we obviously want to get our i mean it's pretty easy to find the decision maker here right away he's like he's a president chief project manager like yeah you can you can find these guys right away and you can tell by the name that he's he's the guy he's the he's the main guy however if you get like a massive company you want this list to be shorter what you need to do is again you go to the seniority level and you go for the and most likely the company of that size you'll be talking directly to the owner so what you do here is that you go and uh, that's funny uh, i would pick owner partner but in this case they do not mention themselves as owners partners so instead we can pick somebody who is the c-level guy and in this case yeah, there we go president chief estimator if the company is even bigger than that <laughs> And we need to find like somebody who is responsible for the department that you operate in. You're going to pick the senior person as well, because seniors that would allow us to get access to decision makers. In this case, it's not uh, it's more than enough, so I'm going to keep these two guys available. Now, I want to. By the way, quick note: you do not need to apply any other filters here because you've already pre-selected pre-filtered out all these companies in the previous step yeah that's why you don't need to pick the company headcount you don't need to pick the geography none of that because it actually jinxes our previous effort and you only want to keep you only want to keep the the um, you only want to use the seniority level filter and that's pretty much it now once you've got the decision makers out there what you do well you go and click on their name and it opens up a profile and it's actually a bad example so i'm going to use the second one so it opens up the sidebar on the right inside linkedin sales navigator now you can you can even connect to them here the problem with this is that once you click the connect button here 
what happens is that you send the request, the connection request inside LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And once you do this inside LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you almost have like this connection. If, if they approve, of course, you have them connect, you connect to them inside this shadow LinkedIn, which is once you cancel it, you will lose access to. So you actually need to reach out to this person again and reconnect to them, send one another connection request. I just want to show you the difference between here's what it looks like. Here's their profile on LinkedIn Sales Navigator. In order to not fall into this trap set up by LinkedIn, so you keep your LinkedIn Sales Navigator profile, which is a good thing anyway, if you do lead generation continuously, just uh, you never cancel. But I like to keep things organized in single place. And uh, if you have this one person added, what happens is that if, if you communicate to them, you actually have their messages inside this messaging box, which is inside LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which has nothing to do with your standard LinkedIn, free <laughs> LinkedIn inbox. You will not see these messages. I think now you can because they've kind of pulled in it together, but they'd still like appear in separate locations. So that's just funny. That's just the way it works, okay? So instead of getting inside this, LinkedIn trap, what you do is this. You go and click these three dots and you then click view LinkedIn profile. And again, I'm clicking control to open this up so it opens up a separate tab. And there we go. So this is the this is my guy. And you can see the difference in the profile. So this is LinkedIn Sales Navigator. This is standard LinkedIn. Yeah, there is a difference. So once you have this one guy, I mean, in this case, it's this one guy because it doesn't feel like it makes sense to connect with this one because he's got like three connections. He's not really active on LinkedIn, okay? So there we go. Now what you do next? Well, you have to work them through all of them, right? So you unselect this one, exclude the first result, and then you include the second result. And because you have your filter already from the owner, partner, CXO, you've got this president guy already here appearing so you repeat the process click uh, their name and then open up their linkedin profile and there you have it and then you basically repeat the thing until the very end so you can see why this method is a little bit more complicated but it's a lot more intelligent because instead of working through how like you don't even know how many companies are out there doing plumbing in New York City. Now you know the exact number of companies. You know that there are 192 companies in New York City that fit your company profile and you work them one by one. So it's a lot more organized and intelligent. So once you run through all of these, what you do next is that you go to the second page, you select them all, you click view current employees and you repeat the same cycle. As you can understand, there's a lot of monotonous, repetitive type of work. So you can actually have like a VA, which you can train them for this, and then they can kind of search these things through. So, and organize them like in a spreadsheet or something so that you can track your effort and see where you're at right now with uh, the people that you're reaching out to. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is how to find clients on LinkedIn sales navigator using these two methods. Let me know which method you prefer in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, show me some love, and I'll see you in the next video.